this is a great viewpoint, don't you think? I love it up here. It's the best spot in Lindau for watching the eclipse. I try to get up here every day to watch it. I guess it never gets old for me. As you must have guessed by now, I'm Nika. I sent out the invitation to a tea tasting session to all the foreign merchants visiting East Shade at the moment. Thank you for meeting with me. This will be a rather informal tasting session. In fact, you were the only merchant interested in participating, so I am very glad you are here. Being the only participant is to your advantage, I suppose, as you will have my full and undivided attention. I brought all we need for the tasting from the inn just below. Just give me a minute to set everything up. I run the Inglenook Inn here in Lindau, you see. Owner and proprietor. It's just below us, down the stairs and to the right. And you're more than welcome to stay there, of course. If you haven't made other arrangements. I suppose you might be on your way to Nava to sell your wares. I lived in Nava for a few years. Worked as a baker. I do miss the bustle of the city sometimes. Hopefully you will have some time to relax and explore the island as well, and not spend all your time working while you're here. East Shade is a beautiful place to visit. I uh, could give you a few pointers if you're interested. There is a reef surrounding the entire bay, so even though Lindo is just a small town, we have the only port on East Shade. Everyone going to or from Nava has to pass through Lindo, so we do get a bit of tourism. Traditionally, East Shade has mostly exported bloom sacks, as well as apples, potatoes and beans. But I always thought we have great potential for tea export as well, as the island has some rather unique flavors to offer. And I am just about ready to give you a few samples. Where to begin? Oh, I know. Why don't we start with my very own Lindovian brew? Made from herbs I grow myself in my back garden. People have described it as both quaint and dreamy. I suppose it's because it reminds you of a basic green tea, but with just a hint of something else. Something you cannot quite put your finger on, like a dream that fades upon waking. I try to make a blend that is both relaxing 
and sleep-inducing, but at the same time has a hint of the flowers that bloom on the coast. What do you think? This blend even made it into the book of classic Shadian tea, which I also have for sale. Or you can read it in the library in Nava if you prefer. I'm quite proud of this one. What next? Let's try the earth root tea. Smell it first. It has a rich, woody scent. It is made with wild root growing under the great shade. That's what we call the giant tree you'll pass on your way to Nava. It's quite the tourist attraction. It grows on top of a wellspring, so it seems like the water comes right out of it. It spreads its branches far and wide, and the forest around it is protected. Wardens tend it and make sure the ecosystem is healthy. Usually, we would encourage people to forage and make their own mystery blends while they are here. But I should warn you that the black thistle that often grows beneath the great shade is protected and illegal to pick. Around the great shade, you will find people languishing by the pools and ponds, dipping their feet in the water and enjoying a day out. You can find people relaxing anywhere along the road between Lindau and Nava, reading, having a picnic or playing an instrument. Most Shadians live quiet lives without much stress. Oh, there's plenty of hard work. We are almost self-sufficient on this island after all, but there is seldom any rush, and everyone knows to relax and enjoy life once in a while. Close to the great shade, on top of a hill, You will find another inn, the Kestrel's Airy, a lovely place to stay if you want to spend some more time in the area. Although Nava isn't far from the Great Shade either, and the inn beneath the tarnished teapot would be my recommendation if you wish to stay in the city itself. The innkeeper is a bit odd, but at the tarnished teapot, there are storytellers performing every single night. So if you like myths, legends, fairy tales, that sort of thing, it would not be the worst place to spend the night. But let's get back to the tea for now. How about some bloom sack tea next? The bloom sack is our staple export, as I'm sure you know, and the product you should already be familiar with as a building material. But a lesser known fact is that the fresh buds of the bloom sack plant can also be used to brew a lively, fresh, and some say bubbly tea. Go on. 
give it a taste. It's quite mild and just a tad sweet and flowery. It makes me think of uh, springtime. Children on East Shade use young bloom sacks to build makeshift rafts. Nothing seaworthy, but they did get us across the river so we could explore the western woodlands and even the Tifmoor Bluffs. Although that was a long hike for us when we were kids. When we grew older, though, We went back with camping equipment, tents and sleeping bags, and explored the Tifmoor Bluffs, and stayed out overnight. If you do cross the river, and continue past the woodland, you will emerge onto the bluffs. The landscape is wide open with wild cliffs and great views of the sea. There are lots of hiking trails and ancient ruins of unknown origins. The area is quite big as well. It continues north and north until it meets the sea ice. It is the least explored area on East Shay. It is said to contain mysterious spots like uh, a cave with stars, lost shipwrecks, and hidden hot springs that almost no one can locate. I can still remember the fresh smell of the heather and wildflowers. And at night, the comforting warmth of our campfire. There's nothing to sharpen your appetite like a day of hiking. And then, after dinner and before bed, a warm mug of meadow spice meat. Here, take a sip and judge for yourself. This is the only drink I'll offer you today that isn't tea. It is typically East Shadian though, so I did want to include it. If you do plan on hiking while you're here, or spending the night outside, please bring some meadow spice. Shadian nights are cold. And this is sure to keep you nice and warm. The warmth of the meadow spice spreads from your stomach and all the way to your fingers and toes. It's made with local honey from the apiaries on the far western coast of the island. This is scragweed tea. It doesn't sound like much, but I quite like it. I pick these weeds myself in the blushwood next to the lake. People go there to fish, and there's even an inn on the island on the lake. Sinkwood Inn, only accessible by boat. 
perfect if you want the cozy place to get away from everything. Although, I guess you could describe the whole of East Shade that way. What do you think? It tastes quite sweet, doesn't it? With notes of spice. The blush wood itself has quite a few mysteries and secrets to it, you know. Strange installations that no one knows the meaning of. An ominous drumming has been heard in the middle of the night. I suppose you could tent out there, if you're feeling brave and adventurous. This is nether leaf tea. Quite the powerful blend, isn't it? I think you'll like it if you enjoy strong black tea. This one is packed with flavors from all over the island. I'm lucky enough to have people bring me a variety of plants from all over East Shade to try to develop new blends. Why don't you sip on that one while I prepare the next? I have two more teas to show you. Now this one is rather special. Mountain wort tea. It's also called walker's tea because it gives you quite a boost of energy. A good travel companion, this one, if you're on a long hike. This will give you the strength and stamina to reach your destination. It elevates the heart and the spirits, and hikers swear it makes the miles fly by. And it doesn't hurt that it's also quite tasty. Mountain wort grows at high elevations, as the name suggests, and the path to the restless reach collapsed a few years back, so getting to the mountains now is not as easy as it used to be. I might run out of mountain wort eventually.
The very last tea I have for you today is Sesha tea, a traditional Navian blend. This tea has probably been consumed here on East Shade for centuries. It is a dark, velvety brew, but clearer and simpler in flavor than the nether leaf although both of them are quite strong and bitter black teas. So, as you see, you have quite a lot to choose from if you would like to dip your toes into the tea trade. East Shade has a lot of potential for it, and there are a lot of variety in the local blends already. There are a few more teas to be had, but I cannot provide them for you. Dream teas, they're called. They are rather... controversial, at least in some circles. So if you are interested, you will have to seek them out for yourself. Seek the roots in Nava if you can find them, and they might let you have a taste. And that's all I'm going to tell you. It will be a personal experience, not something I should tell you about myself. But all the other teas are yours to bring with you. You are more than welcome to them, and we hope you will consider one or two, or more, for future export. Well, that was the end of my sales pitch, and it is almost time for the eclipse. The little night in the middle of the day. Why don't we sit here in silence for a bit and watch it together?